All right, the Nuggets have named a new head coach. It's Mike Malone. Let's go to Sacramento right now and bring in the Sacramento Kings TV play-by-play -play man, Grant Napier, to talk about Malone. Grant, thanks for joining the show. What should the Nuggets and Nuggets fans expect from a Mike Malone coach team? Well, first of all, the players are going to love playing for him. They're going to respect him. He's a no-nonsense guy. He's a direct guy. Uh, he got screwed here in Sacramento. Everyone in Sacramento wishes that he was still the coach. He's not. Uh, everyone in Sacramento is thrilled that he's getting this opportunity. So um, if, if they want a coach that is in complete control of the team and a, a coach that has complete respect of his players, then they're going to like Michael Malone. He's a no-nonsense type of a guy. Uh, I, I think Denver made themselves a hell of a decision today. Uh, Grant, this is Woody. I, I'm hesitating because I've said that I think it's an asinine choice. So you and I have a disagreement. Uh, they have now hired the general manager and the coach of Sacramento, a team that arguably is worse than the than the Nuggets franchise. So please, uh, I will be kind here. Tell me it, more well, reasons all, why. The S9 decision was to fire George Carl. That was the first S9 decision. The second S9 decision was to hire an unproven coach in Brian Shaw. But what do you know this? I mean, uh, it may not even matter if the Nuggets don't get better players. I don't know if they're good enough right now to win. Uh, but I'll ask you, I've spent a lot of time around Michael Malone. Have you spent any time around Michael Malone? No. I, I think the guy's a hell of a coach. Yeah. And again, I go by the players. The players, uh, when, when he got fired here, the players basically, basically quit on the season. They were so crushed and so devastated that they just came out and went through the motions. Uh, this guy, I think, is a really good coach. He's been in the game his whole life. He's got a great pedigree. I mean, you know, people say, well, gee, it's not sexy. Well, was, was Mike Budenholzer a sexy, a sexy hire when he went to Atlanta? Was Frank Vogel a sexy hire when he went to Indiana? Yeah, I know it doesn't have that cachet because it's not a big name, but who cares? If the guy can coach, that's all that matters. I'm telling you, this guy can coach. Grant, I think part of the concern is, number one, everybody here sees he got fired in Sacramento, uh, and they look at his one-loss record, which is not sparkling, as you know. And number nope. two... Everybody talks about wanting to run here, and all we keep hearing is Malone is a defensive-minded coach. So, if you will, put everybody's minds here at ease and, and tell us what he can do with this team. Can he run? Will he, will he want to run here in Denver where he should run? I, I, and I think it's a fabulous question. I think it was a big misnomer about, you know, he doesn't want to run, he doesn't want to run. He's not a half-court coach. He's not a guy that believes in slowing it down. But his mantra is you got to stop the other team first if you're ever going to win. And so he does preach defense. He preaches it every day. He does believe that if you're not a good defensive team, it really doesn't matter how good you are offensively, you're not going to go very far if you're a playoff team. So he does believe in defense. He preaches defense. But this notion that he's kind of a, a half-court, walk-it-up type of a coach is nonsense. I mean, you know, that, that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. He will let the Denver Nuggets run. He will let them go. But he's not going to sit back and watch other teams just come in for uncontested layups. He's not going to sit back and watch a team that doesn't play any defense at all. He firmly believes if you're going to win in the NBA, you have to be a good defensive team. Hey, look at the Warriors and, 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 and the Cavaliers. You know, people think the Warriors are a great offensive team, which they are. But they're a hell of a defensive team too. You know, you got to have both. You just can't win with one or the other. I like your passion about this, and, and, I, and I wasn't sitting there saying you were wrong. I was asking you to prove it to me, and you're doing a very good job so far. But if, if you're sitting here, Melvin Hunt was uh, – let me just respond. Melvin Hunt was well-loved by the, by the players. He actually got them running again when he was here. He is here. The players respect him. Mike D'Antoni, as you well know, Grant, is being talked about more in the NBA Finals than the coaches that are in the NBA Finals. They're saying Mike D'Antoni was the architect of what of who started all of this with a smaller lineup that, that less than seven seconds. So when you could put Mike Malone up against both Melvin Hunt, who kind of proved himself at the end of the year, and Mike D'Antoni, who actually ran more effectively than anybody for quite a while in the NBA, that's where I'm saying asinine in terms of comparing against the other two. Tell me again why you well, think. First of all, yeah, and I'll, listen, I, I'm not, I don't know the situation in Denver currently like you do as it relates to Melbourne, so it's really difficult for me to comment on that. But when, when was Mike D'Antoni a good coach in the NBA? When he had Steve Nash as his point guard, how did he do in New York? 
how did he do in L.A.? I mean, the reality is Mike D'Antoni coached when he had the best player at that time, or one of the best players, in Steve Nash. And Woody, you or I could have coached that team with Steve Nash. I mean, and no disrespect to Mike D'Antoni, but, I mean, how many jobs is this guy going to have? I mean, Michael Malone's had one job. He got screwed here. Now, you may be right. We may be having a conversation three years from now, and the people in Denver will go, gee, what the hell were they thinking when they hired Michael Malone? I, I believe they won't. I believe they'll be saying it's a really good hire. But, I mean, you know, again, you look at Mike D'Antoni. He was great in one stop. He was great in, in, in Phoenix. That's it, period. So I, I don't have any problem with fans saying, well, gee, Mike D'Antoni is more sexy. He's a guy that can run and gun, blah, 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 blah. But, I mean, I, Woody, I, I think you're selling Michael Malone short here, and I really mean that. I, I, I think that you're going to be very happy with this guy. But you've got to get better players. You know that. I know that. Everyone knows that. I mean, the way the Denver roster is right now, I'm not really sure it matters who's coaching. You need to get better players there if you're going to win. Great points. Uh, how do you feel about the fact that Denver's stealing all the people from Sacramento that were fired out there? Grant, you need a play-by-play well, the reality, play the job? Is that, the reality is you can have Pete, um, Pete Delisandro. <laughs> uh, the, the fans here are ecstatic. Uh, the, the people that work in the basketball office are having champagne parties. They're ecstatic. Wow. Uh, so no, no, nobody is, uh, nobody's feeling sad that Pete Delisandro is not part of the Sacramento Kings now. So uh, good luck. That's all I can say. Good luck. I hope it works out well for you guys. Well, Grant, that might be the most shocking part of this whole thing, that Delisandro had a, a heavy hand in the firing of Mike Malone just a few months ago, yet they hire Malone with Delisandro sitting in the office next to him now. Are you shocked at that? Yeah, I am. I'm surprised in this in this sense, guys. How much is Pete Delicentro going to have to do with the day to day operations of the basketball team? I'm hearing not a lot. My own personal opinion, and I haven't talked to Michael Malone about this. If Pete Delicentro were to have his hands on the basketball operations, my opinion is Michael Malone would not have taken the job in Denver. Now, Mike, Mike, maybe they've patched something up over the last couple of weeks or months that I'm not aware of. I'm not privy to. But based on what I know based on what happened here in Sacramento. It is my belief that Michael Malone would not have taken the job in Denver if Pete Delicentro were going to have his hands on the team. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Again, could have they patched stuff up over the, the last couple of weeks or months without me knowing about it? Sure, they could have, but the relationship was not good here. Pete Delicentro wanted Michael Malone out. They didn't talk. I mean, they went months and months, guys without having any dialogue. Wow. Uh, so I, if it's patched up and it's all good, that's great. I, I hope it works out. I really do. But I, I'm really on board with Michael Malone. I'll tell you this, if I owned an NBA team, I would have no hesitation in having Michael Malone as my head coach. And I really mean that. I'm not just saying that because I like the guy. I'm trying to put that aside. If I was the owner of an NBA team, I would have no reservations. I would go out and I would hire Mike Malone to be my basketball coach. That's how much I believe in this guy. Uh, great observations. The uh, Sacramento Kings, let's just for a moment, since George Carl is, is we're clo all close to George, is he going to be able to turn that around? And would you, Grant, if you were in charge of Sacramento Kings, would you trade the first round draft choice for Ty Lawson since the key, Kings need a point guard in the worst way? No. No, I would not trade the first round draft pick for Ty Lawson because I don't think Ty Lawson is that much better than Darren Collison. If you if you think he's better than Darren, I'm like, okay, I'll go along with that side of the argument on that side of the fence. But it, but he's not that much better than Darren Collison, where I'm going to give up my sixth round pick. Now, would I make a would I make a trade if you would give me Kenneth Fareed and Lawson for a player and or players in the yeah. sixth round? Then I would have a conversation. You with can you. have them both, Grant. Right now, Woody and I will make that trade with you right now. That's How's totally that? fair. You know what? That's uh, fine. Hey, listen, I, I know, I, and I listen to a lot of Denver talk radio, and I know what the theme is there. I love Kenneth Fareed. I don't know what the deal is, but I would take him in a heartbeat. But, again, I don't think Ty Lawson, guys, is that much better than Darren Collison. So, personally, I want to give up the sixth pick just to get Ty Lawson. Well, uh, we can't obviously pull the wool over your eyes if you were in charge because we agree with you in regard to Ty Lawson. <laughs> and also agree with you if Kenneth Fareed's in the right system, he's a great he's a great right. compliment player. Yeah. He is a great compliment player, energy yes, player. Exactly. He is what a Cleveland player who skins his knees all the time would like to be. In terms of his eye and uh, do you think? Yeah, I mean, like, listen, if you had a dirty guy, if you had a guy that did the type of work that Kenneth Fareed did, okay, running the floor, rebounding with Demarcus Cousins, okay, you, you, I, I think that could be a pretty good look. All right, I agree with you. A complimentary player, he's not an all star, he's not somebody that you're going to have a parade in downtown Denver for. But I, I think Kenneth Fareed would be perfect on the Sacramento Kings. I really do.
Uh, does the NBA Finals end with the next one? I, I believe they do. I, I believe they do. I think that uh, the way the Warriors are playing right now, and again, I don't think the Warriors have really played anywhere near the way they're capable of in this series. I really don't. Uh, but but I do. I think they're a, a, just a far superior team. I heard you guys talking before I came on, and I agree with you. If you take LeBron James off that team, I mean, it's a disaster. I think it's amazing that they've even won two games to this point. I thought that Golden State was going to win this series in five, but yeah, I think it ends tomorrow. I just think they're too deep. Um, you know, people say they're wearing them down. I don't know about that, but I just I think they're going to win tomorrow. Do you guys think the series ends tomorrow? Uh, I think it goes seven. I think he has one more. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with I'm with Woody. In him. I I think uh, LeBron James is going to do his damnedest to make this thing go at least one more game. But you're I right; so. they have pretty much run out of gas. And, and Grant, if you get tired of living in Sacramento and want to live in a great, great city, Denver, and you'd like to be my partner, I think you are the best. Interviewer with the interview we've had on the air since we went on seven did months you ago. Did you just fire me? Is that what you're doing? Well, well <laughs> you could go hey, work listen, for the Nuggets too. Hey, you and Woody, I'm a huge, I'm a huge hockey fan. Can you get me abs tickets if I move to Denver? Uh, sure, I can get you all you want. <laughs> can you get me the Kings TV play-by-play job if I move to Sacramento? <laughs> Grant, thanks for your take. We appreciate yeah, it. What's, what's your What's your Twitter Thank handle? You I, I want to follow you on Twitter. Grant, are you on Twitter? <laughs> Yeah, at Grant Napier, N-A-P-E-A-R, at Grant Napier. Well, that's creative. Uh, So we'll we'll follow you on Twitter. Thanks, Thanks, Grant. If you buy a car, what do you really want? You probably want a lot of cars to choose from. And you want the dealership's best price. Not some starting price or target price. The best price. And you want it immediately, not after hours of negotiating. And you want a salesperson who doesn't get paid more if you spend more. Because, well, you don't want to spend more. Well, you're in luck. John Elway wants all of those things, too. Better yet, John Elway wants you to have all of those things, too. Come see us or click on johnelwaychevrolet.com.